So let let us talk about how to use the uh, customer item metric for our cross selling. For the customer item metric, so you have to deal with your data uh, because our data we call uh, a long data with more than uh, 39 as uh, I think it's uh, 300 thousand rows and we have to spread it to a wire data and with uh, a lot of columns there is a function we call pivot table uh, in Chinese we say I uh, call Sunil uh, Fenxi it's uh, relative to our customer and with the stock code. So we have to translate the original data we call DF, right? So we use the DF to create a pivot table for our customer and stock code, which is product ID. So we use customer ID as our index and we use the stock code for our column name so you will realize which item which stock code does each customer buy and we also to calculate the sum for the quantity for each stock code so we use the aggregation function using summation. So with the pivot table, and we save the result as customer item metric for later use. Okay, here you can see the content for our metric for customer items. So you can see in the index is the customer ID for each our customer. And for the row, it identify is to show the stock code for each our product. So how many product? There are 3,665 items for this online retail and how many customers so we know there are 4,339 customers for all the transactions so with this pivot table function so we get the customer and stock an item metric like this one. So we get list dimensions with customers number and with all the items for the product. And we do the summation. So here you may see in this metric many sales are not available because for this customer, one, two, three, four, five, uh, four, six, this customer, he did not buy these items. But for this customer, one, two, three, forty eight, these customers, he buy this one for nine quantities so since each per uh, each customer will not buy all the product he may only buy several of the items so rest of the sales are not available because they don't have the quantity to to some to calculate so it just to show with not available but with some cell it did shows the numbers 
for the quantities. Okay. So how many uh, cells for this metric is more than it's a it's quite a bit cells for the matrix. Also you can see the dimension, the ship for this metric, for this customer item metric. So there are 4,339 customers close by 3,665 items. So this is the ship, the dimension for the customer item metric. And also when we get this customer item metrics, it's easy for us to, to know uh, who buy which one, buy what, what uh, items. Here is we show for the customer uh, with one, two, four, eighty one list customer all the way to the end for five. Okay, just show me five. So you can see uh, for this guy, he buy the stock code for one, uh, 10, uh, 135 items with 10 quantities. And also we want to show what is the unique for each one. Here shows the unique for stock code. So here you may find there are 3,665 stock code for these transactions. And how many customers? So we can use this function to calculate the customer ID column and calculate how many unique for each type. So this here shows the numbers of their customers. So there are uh, 4,339 customers. So with the unique function, it's easy for us to find the count, the numbers for each item, for each column. Okay, so you, it's easy for us. Okay, so since uh, many the sales are not available, so we have to translate the not available with uh, zero because uh, this customer didn't buy th those uh, stock items, right? And we only care about does he buy the cost uh, the item or not, but we don't care the quantity for the items. So we use these functions to apply a function to check if the sale value is bigger than zero. Well, bigger than zero, it means he buy something and we indicate with one. Otherwise, we just keep zero for the rest of the cell in this metric. So you get the, the perfect metric for the uh, uh, customer item metrics. So here it shows one, one, one with these three rows. It used to be it used to be 9, 1, 1, right? Because 9 is bigger than 0. It translates 9 with 1. And with 1, it will equal to 1. It's easy. But, but some of the cells, if it didn't contain anything, it's not available, we just keep 0. Okay, so you may check here. 
one for this rows, right? It used to be two quantity for n product. So here, we only need to show does the customer buy this product or not. We don't care about the quantities. Okay, here we show the first rows for start from 1 to 4, 81 rows. So you may see uh, some product for has buy by each customer. Okay, since we have generated the customer item metric, I, uh, the students, you don't have to rea uh, realize all the source code, but I have the idea, I only you to know it's easy for, uh, for you guys to analyze this kind of uh, customer item metric with this function. Okay, you don't have to keep in mind, you don't have to uh, memorize all the source codes. If if later for your business, if you you want to use this function, you just apply with your data set. Okay, so let's start to do the cooperative filtering for our marketing in our e-commerce.